How did you get here? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Mary Perry, and I am David Zen, and we are scripted off the rails. I know we say that every week, but every week I feel like we're more and more unscripted and more and more off the rails. Is it just me? Oh, that's because we're less prepared. <laughs> <laughs> we are less prepared. Um, I have some one-liners here, so it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I might be ready. These are from, I have a, uh, another group of writers emerging. Okay. I'm glad you got some one-liners. <laughs> well, I think we're just going to play it by ear. Anyway, I actually have not. Let me look at my teleprompter. Nope, it's blank. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, how are you? I'm good. Good. Welcome back to the States. I know you've been back for the week, but... Busy, busy, busy. And your trip was amazing, right? Thank you for all the pictures. It was. It really Facebook. was. Good. It was, it was great. Actually, our, uh, we saw probably, I mean, I've been there many times before, probably 90% of the stuff that we did uh, was new, totally new to me. Wow. That's how much, you know, it was really that kind of a different trip. Wow. Uh, and our guide, uh, he really called us his miracle trip, even though we weren't the first tour that, that he's done. But essentially, you know, they've been over there for two years without uh, any tourism going on. And just that he was telling other other guides that, you know, we were the one group that just kept persisting. You know, we're going to come, we're going to come. And we finally got there. So. All this is miracle trip. <laughs> wow, wow! I bet it was nice because you're always like in charge and kind of you know making sure everybody's taken care of when you do your other trips. This must have been nice for you just to be able to be participate, you know, participate in it. You know. Well, they're all kind of the same. I'm, Are they? You know, we have a, a tour company that helps you know arrange a lot of the stuff. So. Yep. I don't know that there was any more or less work on my part in this. But. So, well, good. I'm glad. But essentially, they're open for business. Uh, we do have to do some PRC tests before you go and when you land and then before you come back. But that was okay. a big deal. And I expect that most of that stuff will be gone soon. Yeah. Yep. yep. I mean, you see the the resistance to wearing masks over there, like you do around here. So. Yep. yep. It, more and more, it's normal. Yeah. I have been really in hotels here, so that's the only place you really. Yeah, I guess probably going in and out of buildings over there, like hotels, into a restaurant. They kind of like you to have you wearing a mask, but then once you get in, it's like. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. That's, That's like why so... we're doing this, you know. So yeah. you just carry a mask in your your pocket and you throw it on when someone looks at you strange and then off you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Where did you fly through? How did you where did you go? We flew through Istanbul this time. Okay. Which uh, was no big deal. Yeah. Because you're just connecting, so right. Right, right. It was interesting. The last time uh, Joe Bernardo and I went, we flew through, uh, we flew Air Ukraine and we flew through uh, Kiev. Oh, that's right. Which I guess, I guess it, now that the media is involved, it's no longer Kiev. And I guess now they, now it's Kiev. So. Wow. So for all those years we grew up saying Kiev, I guess we got to change. We were doing it wrong. Yeah. Wow. 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 Well, I'm so glad that you had such a good, um, such a good time. It was, it was good. So we, we got back uh, right in time for Shrove Tuesday. 
Yep, the pictures were amazing. Looks like everybody had a wonderful time. We had 42 people, which is, I think, we had the last one. We didn't do it last year. We had one in 2021. 2020, uh, just before all this nonsense left. started. Right, right. And we had 45 people at that one. We had 42. So, uh, and, and we saw some people that have come back for the first time at that too. So, Good. people are feeling more comfortable coming in. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And they are welcome. And we're just, we just can't wait. So, we're so excited to see everybody. That's so good. Yes. And so then good. the next oh, day, so Ash Wednesday. Oh, so good. You know, we had services in the morning and the at night. The daytime service, we had over 70 people there, which is probably the most we've had for a daytime Ash Wednesday service in probably over 40 years. Right, right. right. You know, people are starting to come back for that, so... They are, and there's plenty of room for everybody, and please, all are welcome. The invitation is there, and Father Joe's um, messages and, and sermons have just been absolutely, as they always are, but they're so poignant and perfect right now through the Holy Spirit. They're just they're so good. They just speak to each and every one of us right where you are, so come and listen. So good. And, of course, we always, we still have our, um, online option if anybody is, is more comfortable there. So, yep, 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 yep. So, what's coming up this week? We have today. S Sunday, we have a guest preacher. Yep. Uh, bishop David Kodia. He is the Bishop of Kenya, the Anglican Church in Kenya. Yep. He is in town. He'll be with us. He's a former, uh, they say, the principal of the Okula Bible College. Mm -hmm. Really, the uh, principal is like the, the president or the, the headmaster. So he ran that school for a while, and he's well known to the Shrules and a good friend of theirs. So, yeah, interesting to hear him preach. Right. And he was one of the first. Uh, he kind of won. I was reading his bio here. He kind of won against the grain. Yep. Uh, he's the first bishop in East Africa to appoint a woman as an assistant bishop there. Wow. Really looking forward his to his story message. and message. Yeah. yeah, really looking forward to that. That's going to be uh, so wonderful and such a great, um, you know, mission and relationship that has been in place for so many years. You know, between the different dioceses in, in Africa. And now that we're into uh, Lent, uh, Dan Bacon is starting up another uh, five or six week uh, adult class series on the final words from the cross. So mm. That will be interesting. I guess that involves a video and a discussion during the, the adult class time on Sunday. Wow, that's so good. That's so good. And uh, can I make a little uh, a little plug for a program that we've got um, coming up through Lent too? No, you can't. Okay, fine. So anyway, I'm working with <laughs> moving right along, folks. Yes. Yep, yep, yes. yep. So we know two things. We know that Alpha is coming up March 30th. There is room, and please, 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 if you have not ever participated in Alpha or you have those questions in your head, you just don't know who to ask some of these questions of why and what and who. Um, this is a perfect time to share a meal and be in a small, safe little group and get those questions answered and get to meet some other people too. So um, we invite you to Alpha. You can let um, Father Joe know, uh, myself or Chris Goodman, and uh, we would have an open invitation. So we'd love to have you. That starts March 30th um, and runs for uh, a few months. So that would be great. And then also coming up, is that I am doing, have the privilege of doing with Dylan Mello, who is our uh, Northwest and the Southwest region missionary. We're doing a program called The Way of Love, which is a slight adaptation of the uh, National Episcopal Church's program. And it'll be um, through Lent, um, ending uh, the week before Holy Week. And it is Wednesdays um, at seven o'clock. So 
it only conflicts with alpha for, I think, a couple of weeks towards the end. So if you're not doing alpha, this is a great time. And if you want to start out and then switch to alpha, totally fine. You can come in and come out whenever you'd like. So um, it's a shortened video and some questions. And uh, it's really a nice, good program to take to go through Lent, talking about the various aspects of our faith and how we can live. So nice and easy. Nice and easy. One hour. All good. So. You can let me uh, let me know if you have any questions. It's also in SwordPoint. Sounds great. So we also have this week is our another one of our food drives. Oh yeah. The Wednesday the 9th from eleven to one. We're coming up on the two year anniversary of doing this every two weeks, so that means we're probably at like number fifty on these food drives, which is wow because. It's not like it, it's diminishing with the, the amount of food that people are bringing. If yeah. anything, it's increasing. So, so good. So we've been so really good. doing a great job there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. In the uh, Lady Tuesday Night Bible Study, they're starting a new study. Yep. In the uh, Gospel of John. And for two weeks, they're focusing on, uh, what are they focusing on? I'm the Good Shepherd. Yep. And then they're going to be going into a couple weeks on the I Am statements of uh, Jesus. So That's great. That's just, oh, those I Am statements. Oh, my gosh. So good. Oh, my gosh. And then what else do we have going on here? There's a big thing in sword points about the friendship connection. So good. So, so friend, I'll let you make a connection with everyone on that here. See how we connect right here? See what that was all about? So friendship connection, it is just a, a nice little program to kind of make sure that everyone has an opportunity to either reach out and meet somebody that they don't know um, or someone online who hasn't been able to get to church um, that you feel connected to your church family. So very simply, if you would like to receive a phone call, an email, back and forth with someone and just get to know them nice and easy, then this is for you. So if you are online or at home, you can call the church office, the numbers in Sword Point, and we can put your name and phone number in the box. And then if you were at church in the back of the sanctuary, we have a box to fill it out. You could put your email, you can put your cell phone, whatever you're comfortable with. It's just us, it's not going anywhere else from there. Um, and uh, put it in there and then um, you will be connected with somebody. So um, it's, a nice, it's a nice program, especially for this time of year as, as so much is going on. So take a look at it. Hey friend, Dave, I'll, I'll choose you, okay? Like, Dave and I text like 14,000 times a day anyway. So like, <laughs> well, usually it's me texting him. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you? <laughs> Maybe I'll look for a new friend. <laughs> okay. So let's see, what else do we have for the calendar here? We got... <laughs> April 2nd, people should mark their calendar. Uh, the local uh, VFW chapter uh, in Brookfield is sponsoring a blood drive. Yep. And uh, I'm really kind of glad we're, we're getting to the point where we can do that and yeah. post it. I know years ago we looked into doing it and we weren't, we couldn't do it because they have specific requirements on like, heating and air conditioning. Oh. They have air conditioning at the time because you know, they don't want people giving blood and maybe getting a little faint and having right. being too hot and stuff. So right. apparently, you know, now we've, because we did Crocker Hall over several years ago. Yeah. That's that. Wow, that's really cool. See that become a regular thing in St. Paul's. Yeah, absolutely. Like once a year. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. That would be really good. And what else? We have, uh, we have our, now that I'm back from Israel and I can tell everyone it's safe and very simple and easy. Yep. 
We do have our kind of sponsored Holy Land trip coming up in June. Oh my gosh, yes. People to kind of make a commitment here kind of quickly in the next week. Okay. I don't need money right away. But I need to know who's going. Uh, Father Joe and Tara are going on that. And uh, our guide uh, that you saw in pictures with us, uh, Yaniv is going to be with us. He'll be guiding it. So this will be an excellent trip. And uh, you still have room? If, if there's any room? silver lining to all this, it's that it's not crowded over there and it's not going to be, it, it won't, everything won't be fully back, but it won't be as crowded Yep. Uh, in June. Yep. The That's so good. Over there, I think we only saw one tour bus, so. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How light things are at this point. Yeah. That's crazy. Hey, I got a knock, knock joke for you. Oh. Knock, knock. Who's knock, there? Knock. Hawaii. Hawaii who? Oh, I'm good. Hawaii you. <laughs> who sent knock, you? Knock, 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 travel jokes. Okay, knock, carry knock. on. All right. Well, I don't have any. Real oh, jokes. here we go. I got one pertaining to what you were just saying. Okay, you ready? Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Oscar. Oscar, Oscar, she wants to go on the trip with us. Do you? <laughs> How good is that? That's that's great. Are you going to sign up now? I I don't know, but like maybe. But I'm like um, W. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe I'm taking I'm taking the W for that one because it was so tied into what he was talking about. Okay. All right. Right. That's fair. So let's talk. Uh, if I can like segue out of the. The one-liners there. Well, I got more, so go ahead. <laughs> All right, so, you know, we're into uh, Lent now, and our readings are yeah. uh, really the reading this week is about the temptations of Jesus because he goes up into Mount Temptation, which we did visit on our last trip. Oh, so oh, good. Which is, so he was baptized by, by uh, John down in the Jordan River in an area it's really kind of across from Jericho so then when he went up into the wilderness it's on the other side of Jericho up a big hill is where they traditionally place it and uh, we went up on that hill so it's, it's it's he's really out in the desert but it was I was reading a little thing I was looking for actually jokes on some patient yeah but, uh, <laughs> I came across this little study and, you know, there's really three things that uh, the devil tempts Jesus to do. One is to turn this, when he's very hungry, to turn the stones into bread so he can eat, to satisfy his hunger. Other one, he takes him to the pinnacle of the temple and tells him to throw himself off so that he might be saved by the angels. Yeah. And finally, he takes him to a mountaintop and he shows him all the kings of kingdoms of the world and says all this can be yours and we know that Jesus basically fights them off by quoting scripture but the thing I found kind of interesting about the study was that just because these were temptations it didn't make them all wrong because essentially what the devil ch challenged him to do Jesus ended up doing during his ministry so I've never really thought of it that way so Hmm. He performed a miracle that changed and transformed multiple loaves of bread into enough food to feed everyone, which was really one of the challenges. Uh, You're right. How many times did he trust the power of God to save his own life, but others to carry them beyond death into a new life? And finally, he claimed earthly leadership for himself and or he doesn't but he instead claims the entire realm of god for all those that follow him so wow he, the temptations that satan threw at him he kind of came back and he did in a bigger way and better way wow, it's, wow. i, I never was, thought about that yeah 
that is uh, that is that's wonderful wow that is wonderful and it, it just goes to show that we know sometimes they're ahead but it's hard to really realize when we're going through stuff is that what evil intends to harm god uses for good and he, he doesn't use it he turns it all around so that we're okay all the time so um that's good that's good just uh, one little other thing of note uh before we kind of sign out here at some point yeah. bidding that uh our friend steve nagy who many people remember he served some time at saint paul's while he was still finishing up in seminary and uh, he did he been ordained a, an episcopal priest and he served a little time just up the road from us in bridgewater but most recently, he's been named the priest in charge at Christ Church in Roxbury. So congratulations, Steve. And, uh, Insert applause here. Yes, Yay. and I'm sure we'll see see more of Steve as he stays in our Northwest region. And we'll be doing some work with him, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. Welcome. Welcome home, Steve. Welcome home. So do you have a, a one-liner here before we sign out or? I do. Why do you think the librarian got um, taken off the plane? And because Did the book flight, her flight? Was, I don't know. Uh, because the flight was overbooked. The flight was overbooked. Okay. 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 Oh, this one, you know, what happens when you wear a watch on a plane? Time flies. Yes, that was a softball, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, I didn't think Dave had too much today. So I'm taking the W, but I gave him the softball. <laughs> well done, Dave. All right. <laughs> so I'll give you a little, a little story before we sign off here. There we go. Never should have given him the softball. Go ahead. You want to disapprove right ahead? I may not approve this. Okay. So a church pastor is invited to the uh, the house of one of his parishioners for dinner. Mm -hmm. Pastor sits down at the table with the family. The mom requests of the daughter, who's uh, age six, to say grace before the meal. She kind of sits there in silence, and the mom says, "It's okay, dear. You know, you can do it. Just repeat what you heard your daddy say before breakfast this morning." The little girl folds her hands her head and says in a loud voice oh lord why did you invite the pastor over for dinner <laughs> oh, all right everyone have a blessed week we'll, we'll see, see you ya. on sunday we'll see you soon bye guys <laughs> oh, oh w's for that or anything no. I don't know. I can't. I can't give you a W for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Joe, that would never happen to you. Ever. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Oh my gosh. You have a great day. All right. Thank you. Nope. Be Bye. Back. Good. Good. I'm glad to have you back.